know that God has been gracious to you throughout the week. It is another Sabbath that the Lord has given unto us so that we may rejoice and be glad in it. This is the New Life Program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I am your host, Sileno Diaw. Most of us sometimes find themselves in a place where they cannot be able to move freely or as they are pleased. This is clearly seen in the people of Israel as they were locked up in the land of Egypt by Pharaoh. Well, today we are going to find out from the Bible in Living Sound about the way to freedom. Pastor Nyamwanda will also be joining us during the Bible segment. Keep it the voice of hope. That you are enjoying the show. Let us now listen to the Bible story which talks about the way to freedom. Stay tuned. It had seemed that the long night would never end, the night which had brought such terror to the Egyptians, but which had brought to the Israelites the long awaited freedom from bondage. But while the Egyptians bewailed the deaths of their firstborn, the Israelites were working hard to be ready to leave Egypt in the morning. Oh, look, Iser, it's getting morning already. Look, you can see the light to the east. And I know we shall never be ready. Now, Sarah, don't worry so. We're making good progress. 
We'll be ready in plenty of time. Oh, I know. I know. We should be so thankful. Nebet has been spared, and God has been good to us. And the Egyptians, too, have been good at the last. All the jewelry they gave you. That they gave to all of us, dear. It's nothing but a just payment for all the work we've done. Besides, they want to help us now. They're afraid of what God might do to them after this, if we were kept here any longer. Father, I have made bundles of the clothes that Mother put together. Will you help me load them on the donkey? Oh, dear, oh, dear, there's far too much for our poor little donkey. And what have you done with the jewelry? And, oh, what shall we do with this kneading trough? We can't leave that behind. Now, Mother, and... it's all right. Father can take the jewelry in his pouch, and look, I can carry this kneading trough bowed up in some clothes on my shoulders. Mommy, Mommy, why are you all up and it's still so dark? Can I get up, too? Get up, my child, and look at the dawn. It's the dawn of our freedom. At last, all was ready, and the Israelites began to leave their homes and go to the appointed meeting place in the first light of day. Everything seems so strange in this light. But look how many people are coming. Eliab, Eliab, wait for me. So many friends. And there go Moses and Aaron. How well they've organized everything. Like a gigantic caravan. And it was a huge caravan that set forth from the outskirts of Ramses that day to go into the direction of Succoth. Almost a million men, not counting the women and children. It took all of Moses many years of experience, first as a prince of Egypt, where he had learned military methods, and later as a shepherd in Midian to get all these men, women, and children with their cattle, their goats, their donkeys, started out in an orderly way for the great journey. We're starting! We're starting! Goodbye, Egypt! Goodbye! Well, Moses, God kept his promise as we knew he would. It feels good to be marching like this in the early morning towards the promised land. Oh, Aaron, there is so much to see to. Such a long column to keep in order. And they have been up all night getting ready. They are still happy and excited now. But they will get so tired. There are so many, many miles to go. And, indeed, as the day wore on and the sun became fiercer in the sky, many of the people became very weary, especially the children. <laughs> Mommy, we've been walking such a long time already, and all this dust from the road, it's getting in my eyes and throat. There, there, Sharon, we must keep going. We must get as far from Ramesses as we can. Oh, Isa, I hope everything will be all right. My dear, the Lord has looked after us so far. He'll not abandon us now. And Moses will know what to do. I know he will. It's hot and tiring now, but in a few hours it will be the cool of the evening. We've enough food to last a little while. Just trust Moses, Sarah. Father, Mother, look. Why are we turning south here? I'm sure that is not the way to Canaan. Well, you stay here with Mother. I'll try and find out. The explanation is quite simple. The direct way leads through the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines are a very warlike people. They would never willingly let us go through without a fight. So our Lord commanded me to lead our people around this land. Lest going through the country of the Philistines, we get into a war for which we are not prepared. Our men lack arms and military training. south. You see, Sarah, how wise the Lord is, and how well Moses is leading us. We're in the safest hands in the world. Oh, I know, I know. And it sounds so ungrateful, but, but if only the Lord would give us a sign, a sign that he's looking after us, and, and that we're doing the right thing. Look, Father, what's that on the horizon? Your eyes are sharper than mine, son. I see nothing. Yes, Father, over there. See? It looks like a pillar. A pillar of cloud. Just the dust from the caravan, son. No, Father. It's far ahead of the caravan. Oh, do look again. It is 
is a pillar of cloud. I see it plainly now. And it seems to be leading us. There's our sign. That's the Lord himself to show us the way. It's the Lord himself. And so it proved to be. The pillar of cloud moved ahead of the long column the rest of that day. And as the dusk fell, it slowly began to gleam and shimmer and became a pillar of fire. And so the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. In case you feel like contributing something in form of ideas to this program, feel free to do so by sending them to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box, 42276 code 00100 Nairobi Kenya Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org This is New Life Program coming to you from Adventist World Radio The Voice of Hope Precious Redeemer my brother and friend Dear Adam God is my Savior On me this place and this place in this earth I'm longing to say for thee Listen to Pastor Nyamwanda to share with us the word of God on a topic known as the trumpet of resurrection. Be blessed. Hello, listener. You are welcome to our radio program. We are discussing the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of the saints and the importance of the doctrine of resurrection. In Paul's own words, we read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, and I would like you to hear what God says in his word. But we would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. I know you remember that the beginning of the Christian church was a difficult time for the Christians. The apostles had preached loud and clear that Jesus is coming again, and they were right. But time was passing, and people were dying, and therefore getting discouraged. But the apostle Paul says, he does not need you or I to be ignorant that when Jesus comes with the sound of a trumpet, with the call of the archangel, the dead shall rise. And he categorizes these people who have died by saying that those who sleep in the Lord or are asleep in the Lord, in other words, they have died and been buried, but they believed in the Lord. Paul says he doesn't want you or I to be ignorant. He says newness of life. This passage rules out completely that people go to heaven at death because if they will be resurrected, it means whoever dies remains here until Christ comes at the end of time with a shout of the archangel and calls the, those who have died to resurrection. Therefore, the righteous, where, dear listener, I would wish you to belong, shall be resurrected the day when Jesus comes. They will be resurrected into newness of life. They will stay and live with the Lord forever. As a matter of fact, those who be found alive, Paul says, will be changed at the twinkling of an eye. They will be translated into a new status of life, into glorified humanity. Then they will join with the dead resurrected in their nobleness, and then they will all in one group welcome the Lord in the clouds of glory. Remember, the Bible is for you. The Bible is reminding you that when you believe in Christ, you are going to live abundance of life. You will not only live in this world, but you will live with the Lord forever and ever. And Christ is coming soon. When he comes, he will restore all things to ourselves. Dear listener, may God bless you as you prepare yourself to be among those that God will receive to himself when he comes again. Amen.
That marks the end of our New Life program today. Be sure to send us your views, comments, and suggestions concerning this program. Write to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. Have a blessed Sabbath and enjoy the rest of your listening. I have been your host, Chileno Diamo.
para nós e não dormes as três, Sanji da lava mais sério, só de língua de tudo que me fez, a não me deixar de acordar. No minha senha e um dono, eu sei que a mulher é uma dita de si, no minha tube, sério, eu vou ver, no me. Like me, 